Hey kids, today we're going to talk about making one of our first projects. That's a center punch. What's a center punch you ask? Well, it's one of the most basic tools in a shop. It also happens to be our first project. We use this a lot to mark metal for drilling holes or just scribing lines to indicate where to cut. Let's start by talking about what kind of metal we're going to be using. That's drill rod. What's drill rod, you ask? It is a pretty awesome material that is soft to start machining, but then can be hardened so we can use it as a tool. There are two types of hardening processes, water and oil. We're gonna be using oil in our shop. That is our material. Let's take a minute and talk about some of the tools we're gonna to be using to create our center punch. We're gonna divide it into two categories, how we cut the material, and how we hold the material. There is a third subcategory of how we tighten these things, but that's not gonna be covered too much in this video. Let's start with cutting. What you're gonna interact with the most is the quick change tool post. Why is it called a quick change tool post? Well, if you spin this little silver thing up here, it'll push these little things in and out. And you can see here them going in and out. And why is this important? Well, we can put different types of tools in here. For this project, we're only going to be using two types, the knurler and the cutting tool. Let's start with the knurler. The knurler uses these two rollers here to press into your metal to create a pattern. You've probably seen this pattern around, most commonly with weights. That's the grips you see on a free weight or bench bar. One nice feature about a quick change tool is that once it is set up, we don't have to change the height. In this video and for right now, just understand that height is a very important part of machining. We always worry about it. In order to get a good cut, the tool has to be set at the correct height. Though, you should understand that if the tool is not set correctly, it's because this thumb screw is either too high or too low. And that's what you use to adjust the height. Let's look at our cutting tool. See the thumb screw is that big silver thing. Ooh, look at our cutting head. Not very nice. Often you'll find this in the shop. Let's go ahead and change it. To change it, we need this little hex key found in the tool chest. Simply loosen up the little screw here. It's tough sometimes. Unscrew it all the way and remove the old bit. There are many, many types of bits down there, all broken down by code. For our shop, we use this TT221 TCN55 carbide turning insert. The nice thing about this bit is it has three different edges. So if one edge is broken, you can flip it around and use another one. When all three edges are damaged, replace the tool. We just put it back in and screw it down. Do not use all of your force to over tighten it. Just a little. Do not want to break that tip off. And there, our new cutter head is installed. Now that we checked our tools, Let's see how we install these cutting heads. Looking at our cutter head, all we do is slide it in here. You're gonna see how that thumb screw stops it. See, it can't go any lower. And it'll move up and down until we tighten it in. And once we do, you see it cannot move. And there you go. That's how we install a cutter head onto the quick change tool post. Not in the scope of this class, but there are a ton of different ways we can cut and turn metal. For this class, we're only going to be using the turning tool and the facing tool. Now we've talked about ways to machine our center punch, let's talk about ways to hold it in the lathe. For this project, there are two ways. The first is a three jaw chuck. Notice how you have to use the key to move the jaws to tighten or loosen an object. We use the three jaw chuck whenever we want to cut our project or face it. The three jaw chuck goes on the head or the spindle of the lathe. On the other end is another type of chuck, a Jacob's chuck. It has a center drill installed on it right now. Center drills are used to pilot or countersink a hole. For this project, they're used to create holes at the center of a piece of stock 
so it can be turned between centers on a lathe. This one doesn't look too good. We should install a new one. We're going to use a new number three center drill. Notice how there are two different parts, the cutter or taper part and the shank or shaft. Also note that there are two sides. Check the other side before installing a new center drill. To install a new one on the Jacobs chuck, you need a Jacobs key. It is just an open gear system. Put the key in to loosen it. Take out the old bit, don't throw it, and install a new one. You should leave around half of an inch of the shank exposed. Tighten it back up with the key. Check to make sure it's tight. And you've installed a new center drill on a Jacobs chuck. A three jaw chuck is great for drilling and facing, but to turn a project, we need to put it in between centers. It seems confusing, but if you look at this picture, you can see that the project is held between the head and the tailstock from before. This means the project cannot slide no matter what we do to it. This helps with precision. For this setup, you need a face plate. That flat end faces out. This is only part of the setup. You need the live center to go in the middle. It is called live because it's actually driven by the machine. On the tailstock, you need to install a dead center. It is called this because it's only powered by the project turning itself. Most students forget the final part, the lathe dog. This is actually what's transmitting the power from the lathe to the project and lets us machine our project. You can see how it works here. Again, note the flat end faces out. And those are the lathe tools we're going to use to make our center punch. Next video, we'll cut our stock down to length. See you in the next video, kids. Bye.